I met my current fiancé at work six years ago and started going out after a few months, and he's an engineer. The boyfriend I had when I was 19 slept with my sister and now is in another country, being a barman and probably being the same idiot he always was. Trying to keep this short, I am 31. I was supposed to get married in April next year, but I had a massive panic attack one afternoon when I came home from work to find my sister on the couch chatting with my boyfriend. I haven't talked to my sister in years, and my fiancé knew I wouldn't tolerate any contact between them, and yet there she was. Growing up, my sister was the golden child and always had an unstoppable need to be the center of attention. When she was a teen and I was 19, she decided that she liked my boyfriend and aggressively pursued him. They ended up doing something together. My ex immediately confessed and my relationship with both was ruined. I was pleasantly surprised to see that my parents for once got seriously angry with her so I didn't lose my relationship with them. I still see them regularly, but I categorically refuse to be in the same room with her. When I left home, I blocked her everywhere and haven't had any contact since. My current fiancé knew how hurt I still am and that she's the only person I will never tolerate and never allow in my life. So I'm not sure I can forgive him for contacting her and inviting her over to get to know each other better. She wanted to make amends. They look so lovely together there on the couch. I don't even know if it was the first meeting. I doubt it, or they would have been chatting secretly for some time. I feel bad typing that. I was petrified, told them I left something in the car and ran away. I ignored his calls and went to my maid of honor to crash there for the time being. After that, the only contact I had with him was to text him that I couldn't remove the sight of him and my sister together, that I have told him thousands of times that I would never allow her back into my life, and I wanted a break. My parents know that the marriage is off. His parents know too. I'm stuck in this limbo where I'm so angry with him. I feel like I'm throwing five years of a relationship down the drain, but I don't see any other alternative. I feel like mine was a simple request, and if he has this unstoppable urge to contact her after I explicitly asked him not to, he is not the right person. But I feel so hurt I'm not sure if I'm thinking straight. How on earth did they even get in contact? They are both weirdos. That's so odd to do. Even if she wanted to make amends, why would you reach out to my fiancé? I'm mad with you, girl. That's annoying. Even if he meant well, he disrespected a very clear boundary of yours. It's not like you were asking him something completely crazy, just not to speak to a stranger he doesn't know. Also, the thinking of surprising you with her in your home? What an idiot. You may decide you want to work through it. You may not. But either decision is valid. But don't feel in a rush to decide where you're still so hurt and angry. I don't doubt he meant well. But what a cloth-eared, brain-dead Muppet. I think it's crazy how the sister has managed to ruin two of OP's relationships just by boundary stomping and also possibly aggressively pursuing the fiancé. Obviously, the ex and the fiancé are dumb, but this seems to be a pattern for the sister. OP, I'm assuming your fiancé comes from a nice family and he has siblings he's close to, so he probably has it in his head that you two can make amends and that you need a push in the right direction. People without toxicity in the family can't relate to people who do. You do need to talk to him and state that this can't happen again, and if he can't respect you with your decision to cut her out, you are done. He probably had good intentions, but those good intentions don't make up going over your boundaries. It doesn't matter what his life experiences are. The problem is that he thinks his life experiences are more valid than hers. He assumes that she doesn't know what's best for herself, but he does. He hasn't listened to her or respected her as an equal. To me, this is a huge red flag. It's none of his business, so why is he getting involved? And why now suddenly decides he wants to get to know her? Also, to invite her to OP's house is even more of a betrayal. He could have done it in a coffee shop. Honestly, it seems very weird, and I don't think I could get past the nagging feeling of his true intentions. A little backstory. My boyfriend and I have been living together for seven months now. I have never noticed any other weird behavior, but it's honestly driving me crazy. On to the story. My 24 boyfriend, Andrew, 26, has been moving stuff around every room in the house for about four months now. 
At first, it started with small things like the toothpaste lid being open after I remember closing it or my clothes moving out of the hamper. I asked Andrew if he noticed anything weird and he just shrugged me off and said I was probably seeing things. After this first conversation, it cooled down and nothing seemed out of place. But then I started finding clothes undone that I'd put away on the floor of the bed that I'd made. So I began to quietly snoop around the house after I cleaned up to see if I could maybe catch him in the act. I never found him doing anything, but if I quietly walk into a room, he would be jumpy. The bed was a continuous one, so I was fed up one day and decided to put my phone in our bedroom and leave it recording. I made the bed and told Andrew I was going to the store. I went and sat in my car for 10 minutes, and when I came back, the bed was unmade. I confronted Andrew about this before watching the footage. He said I was crazy, and I told him about the phone. He got up and started yelling in my face about how I set him up and that I won't find anything. He's never used this type of anger or language before, so I was honestly scared and confused. So I went and grabbed the phone, and lo and behold, there he is unmaking the bed. I showed him the footage, and he screamed that I was a crazy witch, and he stormed out. Andrew came back a couple of hours later, trying to apologize. I asked him why he was messing with me for months, and he led me to believe I was crazy, and said that this was the only time he's done it, as he knows it's been bothering me, and he thought it'd be funny. I asked him why he didn't just say that instead of blowing up on me and denying it. I told him that until he told me the truth, and that he's been doing this for months, that I would be staying at my mom's and not speaking to him. Not the idiot. He's gaslighting you and blowing up when he gets caught and then doubling down with more gaslighting. This is unreal. Stay away from this guy. It's all fun and games until you start feeling tired and ill and find out he was poisoning you or some crap. He's been playing one-sided mind games with you for months, so get out while you still can. OP, this is the most classic definition of gaslighting. First, purposely changing the environment, telling you that you're wrong when you notice it or that you must have misremembered or something. And he did it for months because he thought it would be funny? To him? Then to make matters worse, when you caught him and called him out on it, instead of admitting to his supposed joke slash prank and apologizing, he first denied it again, then yelled at you and blamed you for setting him up. You are the idiot if you don't get away from this psycho ASAP. He's dangerous and he's manipulating you. The gas is lit and the sky is on fire. Get out. Pack your stuff and get out or take your important items to a safe place and get out until he's gone. It sounds to me like he's laying the groundwork for some serious boundary stumping and nastiness down the line. I wouldn't go back. He has been doing this, which is why he was so angry he got caught. And the fact he got so angry so fast is extremely alarming. Please see this for what it is and get yourself out. Don't go back alone to get your stuff. To start, my husband's brother, aka my brother-in-law, and I have always been on bad terms. We don't see each other much and we're not mean to each other, but more like we don't like each other. My brother-in-law was getting married this past week. He only invited my husband, which is fine because I wasn't planning to attend his wedding. Really no big deal. On the day of the wedding, my husband couldn't take the day off, but came home early to get ready to go to the wedding, which was three hours away. The toilet stopped working and needed to be fixed. I'm seven months pregnant, and I frequent the bathroom many times a day. I asked my husband for five minutes to look at the toilet, and he suggested he'd fix it when he got back. So I tried to convince him to at least try, and it might work. He took a look and said it needed fixing, which would take 10 to 15 minutes. I asked him to do it even though he refused, but he did it anyway. He took a while and didn't pay attention to the time. He freaked out, saying he should be driving at that time, but I insisted he finished fixing the last part, and he barely did. He was mad and got dressed quickly and left. It turns out he arrived late and missed the ceremony and made it to the last part of the wedding. He was mad at me for causing him to miss a huge part of his brother's wedding and said his brother was upset and disappointed he wasn't there to support him. He argued, saying I made him late only because I couldn't go to the wedding, but I said that that's not true because even if he had sent an invitation, I would have declined to come. He then said that it must be because I hate his brother and what I did was a petty attempt to make him miss his wedding, 
especially since I could have waited till he got back to fix the toilet. He's still mad at me for missing the wedding to this day. You are the idiot. You could have called someone to fix it. You could have just dealt with it. You knew he was on a timer, but rather than value his time, you chose to value your wants instead. Not sure how long ago this was, but don't be surprised if your husband resents you for this. You made him disappoint his brother, and clearly he is upset about it. You are the idiot. You are lying to your husband and yourself if you claim you didn't do it on purpose to make him late for the wedding. If the toilet was broken and the smell made you sick, you could have called a plumber. Instead, you were petty and passive-aggressive. You felt your husband shouldn't go if you weren't invited. Everyone's the idiot here. I understand you two don't get along well, but your brother-in-law was so mean not including you in the invitation, and your husband should have stood his ground and supported you, or at least you all could talk. That way, there would be no awkwardness. That being said, the biggest idiot is you. You could have held on for a few hours or called a plumber. Your husband already said no once, but you bug him until he gives up. 100% mean, and pregnancy has nothing to do with it. I was sleeping in bed with my boyfriend, and I heard a weird noise outside that woke me up. I looked out the window next to the bed and saw a guy messing with my car door and window. It was a little past 2 a.m., and it looked like he was trying to rob it. I immediately grabbed some of my heavy stuff from the shelves and climbed out the window. Outside the second floor window was a section of roof that covers the porch and is flat enough to stand on. I yelled at the top of my lungs, Someone's stealing cars down here! James Richard Paul Mitchell! Come out here fast! He's stealing cars, y'all! The names I was saying were the male neighbors on either side and across the street. He lives in an urban residential area, so their places are super close in an earshot. The guy started running for my car, so I started yelling, Paul, Paul, he's outside your house now. James, he's in your yard now, near your kid's stuff in the corner. At that point, many of the neighbors came running out, and my boyfriend was also in the window, asking me what the heck was going on. I ignored my boyfriend for the moment to call out to James. James, man, I think he's in your trees out past your place. A few of the men went looking that way and didn't see anybody nearby. So when they came to ask me what was up, and I said I'd go downstairs to talk, so I wasn't yelling from the roof. I came back in the window, and my boyfriend was saying something about my outfit. I didn't realize, but I was just in an overly large t-shirt that I wear to bed and underwear. So I put on pants before I went downstairs, and he came with me. I told the neighbors I woke up to a noise and saw someone trying to jack my car, so I called for help. We looked around and figured he was scared off, so everyone went back in to go back to bed. My boyfriend was upset with me for waking up the whole neighborhood and yelling for everyone to come out, looking like a crazy person on the roof, barefoot, in a t-shirt, and no pants. I was upset because I feel like having a car stolen is way worse than making a bit of noise at night and being seen in my PJs. He said he didn't think my car would be stolen. Maybe he was just checking locks and seeing if stuff inside could be stolen. I said I didn't know. Plus, my car doesn't have anything in it. So why try and break into that instead of the neighbors with more crap in their cars? Anyway, he said he didn't like how crazy and disproportionately I acted. And he's afraid I'll do more embarrassing things like that if we move in together, which we were thinking about. Right now, we have separate places, but I spend most nights sleeping at his to the point where we almost see the place as ours. Am I the idiot for waking up the neighbors at 2 a.m. in my sleep clothes about a car thief? My boyfriend is embarrassed by my overreaction. Not the idiot. Apparently, your boyfriend would rather you get robbed than show more balls than him. Good for you for being proactive and not allowing someone to steal your car. That was great thinking to yell out the neighbor's names. A t-shirt and underwear cover far more than a bathing suit, so that isn't an issue at all, especially in an emergency. Tell your boyfriend that you have no intention of moving in with someone who would rather your car get stolen than do something about it. Your boyfriend is the one who's overreacting. It was the middle of the night. What were you supposed to be wearing? A business suit? Gotta say, this made me laugh. Did the neighbors complain? If not, your boyfriend needs to lighten up, unless you do this kind of thing often. Otherwise, everyone in the neighborhood is now on notice to lock their cars, thanks to you. Not the idiot. I think you were brave and did what you needed to do to stop a thief. 
and warn your neighbors. Even if he was just trying to steal things out of your car, he's still a thief. He deserves to get yelled at slash caught and your neighbors need to be alerted. But seriously, don't move in with anyone who thinks you're embarrassing when you're actually brave or is using that as an excuse not to move in together. A good man who loves you would think the whole thing was hilarious and awesome. My son Martin, 18, is taking a gap year before entering university. He's always been a good student and has a job, so I didn't have a problem with this. My wife, on the other hand, wasn't too fond of Martin's decision. My wife and Martin have been having a ton of trouble lately. They have lots of arguments that always end with someone saying something hurtful. My wife and I have had our fair share of these arguments, usually because I defend Martin and she doesn't like that. My son sent me a message while I was at work that said his mother had kicked him out of the house. He was going to stay at a cheap motel while he looked for an apartment. I was shocked. I never thought my wife would do something like that, especially without consulting me. When I arrived home, I asked her why she did that. She said that she was tired of him and his disrespect, and that since this was her home, it made sense to kick out Martin. I was furious with her because her reasons were all petty. I decided to pack a small bag with clothes and other personal articles and stay with my son for a while, at least until I'm not angry anymore. My wife yelled at me that I was an idiot and that it was my job as a husband to support her decisions. Her whole family has been calling me and sending me messages nonstop since I left my house. They said that I was disrespecting my marriage and that my wife should always be my priority. What's making me believe that I might be the idiot is that Martin feels very guilty about what's happening and even told me that I should return home and speak to his mother. Not the idiot. You can divorce a spouse, but your kids are your kids forever. You shared the home and you shared the responsibilities for your son's upbringing. Your wife should not get to make unilateral decisions about who lives in your shared home. Also, this matter is between you and your wife. Her calling you an idiot for standing up for your son and getting your extended family involved is telling. Finally, your son is now caught in the middle and probably feels bad that his difficult relationship with his mother has caused you pain. It sucks all around. I am leaning towards everyone's the idiot here, except Martin. Your wife for kicking out her son without consulting you, and you for using that as an excuse to move out. It really seems like the two of you are projecting your marital problems onto Martin, who just wants to take a gap year. Completely understandable, given the current pandemic. Disagree. If Martin had been taking the gap year to chill at home after work, while still expecting mom to do all the housework she's been doing for him since he was a kid, while he's smarting off to her as an adult and her husband dismisses all her complaints as petty, I can see why mom might have lost her temper with both of them. OP is not the idiot. Kicking out your kid as an impulsive action without consultation displays extreme behavior. While it is her house, it is also his and yours. Granted, he is 18, but you don't just flip a switch all of a sudden and toss someone out on their ear. Obviously, you agreed that her actions were abrupt and you didn't support that decision. Now she has engaged family minions to convey the message that you have to obey her. She calls it support. Hard to support a decision when you weren't involved in making it. 